Most of these are, in fact, almost all of these are from a request of Christy Pulliam, which I believe she has responded to this afternoon. Um, <coughs> Twenty eighteen uh, Warren article balance. Uh, she did. I remember reading it earlier. I don't remember what the number is at the moment, but she did print them out and I have them in front of me. But it's just not jumping out at me. I assume we can mark, mark that as satisfied. You all got copies of this, right? Yes. And we've got. Uh, New disk drives intended uses. Uh, she uh, also supplied the answer to that. So I'm marking that as satisfied. Workbook PC replacement schedule, I believe Dave, you were primary driver on that. Or was it you, Brian? I believe that she satisfied that with, a, with an Excel spreadsheet. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You did have. Um, I did have a question of how that spreadsheet was working, but I think I can deal with that offline with Christy. Um, I must be wiring. She also responded to that. I assume we can likewise mark that satisfied. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. The SAM and firewall licenses, will they continue to work without paying the annual fee? I believe the answer was a qualified yes. Is that accurate, Christy? So we're dealing with the question, which was, Will the uh, software monitoring, as well as the fireware software licenses, continue to function if we don't pay the annual fee? And I believe your response was a qualified yes, correct? I disagree. It was a qualified no? It was a qualified that if we run into a problem. Well, that was the qualification, yeah. So the answer is still not known whether we continue to work or not, is that what you're saying? They'll continue to work. Okay, so it's a qualified yes, yes. yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Regina. Could I give some, I've had a personal experience lately, and I had some questions which the finance director uh, addressed for me earlier this week. I was nervous on why when I went on to the town website, it said it was an unsecured network. Yeah, and Chrissy, please interrupt if I'm not reiterating this correctly, but she replied to me, and I've actually gone through a similar circumstance before at the CPA firm I was at. Because things were not renewed properly and some of the software and hardware was no longer supported, that there's a re is that one of the reasons why when I go onto the town website that it's showing as unsecure? Because <laughs> the website is actually showing secure, and it has okay. a lock on the website. You, you're seeing not secure under the email, and that is because of the fact that we can't get a certificate for our mail server any longer because the company that we have our mail server on is no longer in business. So in the budget, in the MIS budget in front of you, there's, I think, $3,600 or something for a new mail server license. However... It is still secure because it's behind okay. our firewall in and hosted in house on our own server. So it's okay. not like it's out. So if it was an unknown um, server, it might correct, be. Correct, yes. But since okay. it's here behind the firewall and managed by RIT in house, then it, even though it says not secure, it just means that it doesn't have the certificate, the digi cert certificate that you can get that people can get for a website. But it could get it if we had a more up to date system. If we had a more up to date um, mail server, then yes, we could buy a certificate for it. If we felt it was necessary, it doesn't mean that right. it would necessarily be money well spent either for that um, okay. because of the fact that our IT is certain that it's secure where it is. The website, however, does have the little padlock on it. If you look up and has HTTPS, colon, backslash, backslash, it has a little padlock next to it. So that does tell you that the town's website is, um, does have the DigiCert certificate and it is a secure website. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, what that tells us is that you're <coughs> using encryption up and down the wire. So when stuff goes to your server, it's encrypted. When it comes from your server, it's encrypted. It doesn't necessarily mean it's uh, yeah. secure. This is why I was highlighting the fact that when your McAfee software labels something as secure, it's a very relative term. Right? 
because in reality, nothing in the world is secure in the absolute sense. So there's levels of security. There are rings of security. Where those rings exist or whether they exist is the question. And how they evaluate that in their software has to be examined in order for you to draw a, a reasonable conclusion. As Christy was pointing out, they have security on the server because it's behind the firewall. You get beyond that firewall, it doesn't appear to be secure because you're now inside that firewall. But not everybody <coughs> can get inside that firewall. And that's what makes it secure from that point of view. Right, Christy? Thank you. What I was trying to clarify is that I think that when a system is more up to date and can be fully supported, it's going to become more secure. That's just the way I view it. I know that I went through the similar circumstance at a CPA firm. We weren't able to update our servers completely, and we were nervous about customer confidentiality. When we did that, but we were able to get the full support, we had less of a concern. That's all I was saying. These things shouldn't just be simply pushed down the road because no one wants to deal with them. Right, I agree. Things shouldn't be pushed down the road. Nor should they be being a priority because you're nervous without justification. Okay. I'm not uh, nervous. I thought I heard you say you were. Anyway, the official opinion on the uh, yes, second year appropriation of the trash, I believe you had an update, Regina, on that. I yes, had. I've spoken with town council, and he wants, we, we want to bring it to the full board of selectmen, and we should have an answer for you after we meet again. As you all know, I, I forwarded you the email which the legal questions that were posed to uh, mm -hmm. a town attorney uh, were submitted, and Regina has uh, assured me that the <coughs> town attorney is going to be at the next board of selectmen's meeting and address those questions at, in that public forum. Uh, so we'll all look forward to that. I believe that is all for information requests. Is that Mr. Walbert? We also received, thank you, uh, Director Jacobs and Deputy Hale, two requests that we asked about the, the uh, diameter in the pipe for the, uh, the new water line. We got the email on that. We thank him for that. And also the listing of streets to be paved that Mr. Mara asked is in the CIP report. That was uh, that's handed out. So we thank Director Jacobs and Deputy Hale for sending us those emails. That is correct. Thank you, Brian, for pointing that out. Uh, it wasn't on our official request list, no, but, but because we had that meeting where we were basically exposing our thoughts in the various Warren articles, we gave the department heads a, a chance to look at the videos. Apparently, Chris was proactive enough to do so and immediately supplied us with a whole bunch of very useful information. And I'm sure we're all very happy to have seen that and looked at it over already. No, and I might add very like timely on the Director of Public Works uh, right away and the Deputy Director, which is, is excellent stuff and very well explained. So we appreciate yeah, that. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian. 